ESXi. If you check the local hard drive where the ESXi was installed, there you would have multiple partitions because this is the default architecture. This is the default behavior over here. Okay. However, the disk, the LUN that you format with the VMFS, there you should only have one partition, and this should be the only thing over here. Okay. Now, let's talk about this point, which is very important one. What is hardware acceleration? Let me answer this question that what a hardware acceleration is, why it says unknown, why is it important? Let's talk about it. So when we talk about hardware acceleration over here, we are basically referring to a functionality called Y. You pronounce it like a letter Y. Okay. So when I say hardware acceleration, okay, I am basically referring to functionality of Y. And this is the way I pronounce it. Okay. Why basically stands for VMware API for array integration. This is what it means. Okay. VMware API for array integration. What is array? Array is referred to as storage. So VMware is basically integrating with the storage via the APIs. That is what it basically means over here. Okay. Now, how is it benefit? How how is it going to benefit you? What is you know uh, what is the functionality over here? So basically, when I talk about why, why has four functionalities? Okay. What are the four functionalities? ATS, cloning, deleting. And zeroing. Okay. What do you mean by these four functionalities? Let me answer this question. Okay. So, what would happen over here is let's take an example that you have a virtual machine. Okay. Let's say that you have a virtual machine and you want to clone this virtual machine. You want to create another replica of this virtual machine. Okay. This is what you want to do. Now you have a big storage and the hard drive for this virtual machine is basically residing on the storage. So the hard drive is basically residing over here. Now, when you have to make a copy, when you have to clone this virtual machine, you will basically be cloning the hard drive as well. So what you will be doing is that on the storage, you will be replicating this hard drive. You will be cloning this hard drive and you know, you would be like creating a new copy of it. So, what would happen in the past is that the ESXi on which this virtual machine is running, the CPU for that ESXi had to basically reach out to the storage and tell every time that, you know, this file has to be cloned or this file has to be cloned. Basically, CPU was, you know, doing back and forth and giving the instructions. This used to happen in the past. Now, because of which the CPU utilization would go high. Because the CPU is doing all the job over here, it is doing all the work over here always reaching out to the storage and telling the storage that what has to be done and what not has to be done. So basically the CPU utilization would go high, would go high. With the introduction of Y, that is, if your storage is Y compatible, okay, if your storage is Y compatible, then what CPU is going to do is CPU is going to offload the activity. CPU will tell the storage that, hey storage, I'm not going to come back to you and tell you the same thing again and again. Here is the hard drive. Make a clone of it. Whenever you are done, let me know. Okay. So what CPU is doing is instead of telling the storage each and everything, you know, at every at every uh, you know step, it is basically going to offload the activity. So ESXi is telling the storage that you have to clone the hard drive. Do it at your end. You don't need me for this. Whenever you are done, you let me know. So the benefit over here is that the CPU utilization is not going high. CPU doesn't have to, you know, go back to the storage every time and chase it and ask for the status that where it is. Okay. This is what offloading of storage is in terms of cloning. Any questions if you did not understand this? Okay. Similarly, the other option that you have is deleting. Okay. 
So what is deleting? So for example, you have a virtual machine. Okay. The virtual machine's hard drive will be placed on the storage. Let's say that you want to delete the virtual machine. You are done with the virtual machine. You don't need it. It has to be deleted. Now, if this virtual machine has to be deleted, what would happen is the ESXi on which this virtual machine is running, the CPU will basically, you know, reach out to the storage every time and tell that, you know, here is the file deleted. Here is the file deleted. So basically CPU is doing all the manual work and telling the storage that, you know, here is what you need to delete because of which the CPU utilization will go high. Now, if your storage is Y compatible, CPU is going to offload the activity. CPU will say, hey, storage, here are the files for the virtual machine. Delete them all. Once this is done, update. So what ESXi is basically doing is it is offloading the job to the storage and not having to go back and tell the storage again and again about it. So basically, ESXi is the one which is offloading it. Storage is doing the job. And whenever this is done, the uh, ESXi will be updated about this. Okay. Any questions there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go for it. So this uh, Y P job is it on all the ESSI or just on the storage? Storage. Storage. It so is storage. on this. Yeah. Oh. Your storage has to be Y enabled. Yeah. Okay. Storage. Okay. If the storage is Y enabled, then it will be able to offload the activity because the activity is happening now at the storage end, not at the ESXi end. You get the point. Okay. Got it, yeah. Now, the third one that I have is basically zeroing. So we understand that, you know, zeroing is a process wherein, you know, if you have a virtual machine, so for example, if you have a virtual machine, and you have a hard drive over here of 25 GB, for example. And let's say that you created a thin provisioning or you created a thick eager zero. Okay. Now, when you are creating a 25 GB hard drive with a thick eager zero, you know, all the zeros have to be filled out. So if you have your storage and in the storage, for example, this is 25 GB. So, you know, when we are doing uh, thin provisioning, when we are doing eager provisioning, uh, basically, we have to fill out the zeros. We have to make the storage space available, right? So here, instead of the CPU, you know, reaching out to the storage and telling that, you know, which space needs to be made ready or, you know, where the zero has to be filled. Again, what we are doing over here is we are offloading it. So ESXi is going to offload the activity and it is going to tell the storage that, hey, storage, here is the 25 GB space, fill out the zeros, do this activity at your end. You don't need me. Whenever you are done, you let me know. Okay. So this is what basically, if your storage is Y enabled, this is what is going to happen over here. Okay. So the benefit over here with Y is that if you have a storage which is Y enabled, if you have a storage which understands the functionality of Y, then all these three tasks they can be offloaded to the storage. So this ESXi CPU will not be chasing and will not be you know, getting this job done. ESXi is just going to tell the storage that you do this activity at your end and whenever you are done, you let me know. Okay. This is what basically Y is going to do for these three functionalities. Any questions over here? Okay. Let me talk about what ATS is and why do you need an ATS? Okay. So earlier, so for example, let's say that you have a storage. Okay. And on that storage, let's say you carved out LUN1. Okay. I carved out a new LUN. Let's call it as LUN1. Okay. Now in my environment, let's say I've got three ESXIs. Yeah, I've got three ESXIs. Now, what is happening is LUN1 is basically presented to all the three ESXIs. Okay. Now, let's say that you have a virtual machine. You have a virtual machine which is residing on each ESXI. Okay. And the hard drive for all the virtual machines is, are basically residing in LUN1. Okay. Now, these machines 
have to make a right request. They have to write something on their hard drives. Okay, they have to make a right operation. So what would basically happen is that the virtual machines can simultaneously write. So for example, VM01 is making a write request. At the same point of time, VM02 can also make the write request, right? You can have different machines writing to the data store at once. That's definitely possible. So earlier, what used to happen when Y was not there, when this functionality was not there, so for VM01 to make a write request to the LUN, ESXi had to block or had to lock the entire LUN. So ESXi1 had to lock the entire LUN and now virtual machine could make a write request. Okay. When VM01 is making a write request, at that same point of time, okay, VM02 and VM03, they cannot make a write request. They would basically be in the pending state. They cannot write the to the hard drive simultaneously. Why? Because the LUN is logged by ESXi1. So here you would have latency. The application will basically start facing latency. This is what would happen over here. Okay. Similarly, when VM01 is done writing, you know, on the storage, okay, then what would happen is the lock will be released. Okay. And then ESXi02 will basically hold the lock. And now this virtual machine will basically start writing to the storage. Now here, what would happen is the other virtual machines in the environment, they would basically go in the latency mode. They will have to now wait. They cannot write any operations because the lock is held by VM02. Okay. So you see the point over here that earlier, whenever someone had to make a write request, the entire LUN was logged, and because of which the other virtual machines were not able to write simultaneously. This was the concern that we had earlier. Okay. So what was the solution? Solution that VMware came up now is called ATS. What is ATS? ATS stands for Atomic Test Inset. Here, your storage needs to be Y enabled. Okay. If your storage is Y enabled, and if it has the functionality of ATS, so what would happen is, instead of blocking the entire LUN, now I am only going to block the sector on which the write operation has to happen. Okay, so here what we are basically going to do is that instead of blocking the entire LUN, I would be just blocking the sector on the hard drive where the write operation has to happen. Two virtual machines do not write in the same sector. They write always in the different sectors. That is why multiple virtual machines can make a write request now. This is what ATS is basically going to do for you. Okay. So when we talk about why, we are basically saying that your storage box should be why compatible. This is what we are saying. Okay. And why offers four functionalities, which is ATS, cloning or copying, deleting, and zeroing. Any questions over here? How would you verify that whether your storage is Y enabled or not? Yeah. It's... Yeah, can I come in? Sorry. Uh, Go for it. Go for so, it. Is there any way uh, adding multiple VMware to an existing data store can affect the performance of the VMware? I did not get your question. Like adding multiple VMs to a data store, can it, affect, can it affect VM's performance? Yes, so what would happen is, see, you need to understand that on one data store, you will not be placing only one virtual machine. You will have more than one virtual machine on the data store. Yeah. Okay, now the virtual machines that you have over here, they will require IOPS, they will require bandwidth. So, you need to understand that your SAN01, this should be backed by SSD, or this should be backed by NVMe if you have a lot of IOPS requirements.